Coming up on Hands on iOS, I am going to answer one of the most common questions I get. It is all about battery health and battery life on your iPhone. Stick around. Hands on iOS is brought to you from Twit's LastPass Studios. You're focused on security, but are your employees? Well, LastPass can ensure that they are by making access and authentication seamless, whether they're working in the office or remote. Visit lastpass.com slash twit to learn more. This is Twit. This episode of Hands on iOS is brought to you by LastPass. Visit lastpass.com slash twit. All right, folks, probably more than any other support question I get revolves around the battery life of the iPhone. There have been uh, a number of articles that have been written about how Apple slows down a phone over a period of time to get you to upgrade to new phones, and they make the batteries go bad, and this and that and the other, and so much of that is utterly and completely false, and instead has to do with the basic chemistry of a battery. It's how a battery works. We don't have advanced technology that keeps batteries around for a long time, and almost more than any other device, we are constantly discharging and recharging our phone battery. And along with that comes different situations where you might have it get way hot, or get very cold, or have it uh, process a lot of information over time, which starts to wear down on the life of the battery. So Apple, of course, knew that one of these situations could come up at some time as people continue to use their devices. This speaks to the long-term quality of the devices that they make. And therefore, they wanted to introduce a technology that allowed those phones, those older phones, to continue to work in an acceptable way over time, regardless of the life of the battery, regardless of the health of the battery. So let's talk about what you need to know when it comes to battery health and battery life on your iOS device. All right, so I have my iPhone 11 Pro Plus here, uh, a, a huge iPhone, and it is a relatively new device. I have not done many charge cycles, and so the battery health is still quite good on it. But you may have an older iPhone, and you may have noticed that over time, your phone sort of gets a little sluggish and seems to not be as zippy as it once was. Or you may notice that the phone is actually completely shutting down randomly, and you're not sure why. And then maybe you recharge the device, you plug it in, you see that your battery just seems to jump from full health to half health to no health and anywhere in between. Well, let's talk about what you can do should that happen. We're going to go ahead and launch the settings app. Yes, we are back in the settings app and scroll down until we get to battery. I'm going to tap on battery and bring up the battery screen. Now this has information about the battery health, but also about the battery charge over the course of time. And you can see that on mine, it shows how much uh, time that the screen was on and the screen was off and what the battery charge level has been over the course of the last 24 hours. So between yesterday and now, you can see the life of my battery and see which apps were using those parts of the battery. So immediately you can start to tell what apps may be draining your battery, which is quite nice. Uh, I can go ahead and tap up here to change it to the last 10 days and start to get a bigger picture of what apps are using my battery. Now, you can see that the dark blue color here in the chart shows the screen time that was on and the light blue shows the screen time that was off. And so that's the activity that takes place uh, using the battery over time as well as battery usage with the green bars. Now, it will show you, as I mentioned, the battery usage by app. So you can see that, embarrassingly, Wizards Unite took a lot of my battery life, and Audible, which is an app that I listen to a lot, is also taking about 10% of my battery over the past uh, 10 days. And as you scroll down, you can start to see which ones are using more or less, and Apple even gives you a little bit more information showing you 
what uh, parts of the app are are using your battery. So in the case of Audible, of course, it's audio and background activity like downloading and syncing my position in a given audiobook. Now, if I tap, I can show activity, which means this is how much time has been spent over the last 10 days in these given apps. Yeah, I spent nine hours and 30, nine hours and 53 minutes with Wizards Unite, uh, nine hours and 30 minutes of it actually being on the screen and 23 minutes in the background using in, using my battery. So this is a quick way to see what apps may be causing a lot of your battery drain. A lot of folks who uh, use Snapchat end up being surprised by the amount of battery that gets used by that app. That app uses a lot of battery, even in the background, and can end up being kind of a pain to have on your device when it comes to trying to save battery life. So this is just a good way to make sure that you don't have any apps that are kind of the cause of the issue. And scrolling down, you can see all these different apps and where they rank in the you know sort of space on battery life. Now, this is also the place where if you choose, you can turn on low power mode. So low power mode is that option that is available in uh, the control panel, and you can set it to sort of turn on whenever uh, the, the battery gets low, you get a notification, do you wanna turn on low power mode? And what it does is it stops background activity from taking place and does a few other things to sort of save on your battery life until you can get it to a place where you can charge it a little bit better. So low power mode is very helpful. Some people I know leave it on all the time, and some people just turn it on whenever they get to that lower power place. I typically use it for that. Most of the time I do not have an issue where I'm not near some sort of charger to charge my device, but that is one place where you can do it. And of course, check out my hands-on iOS episode where I talk about control panel so you can learn about adding it or removing it from your control panel. So simply toggling that on and off will turn on and off low power mode. Now, battery health. This is the area that I send people to to get more information about the health of their battery. So when I tap into this tab, you can see some really interesting information here. So the first uh, section here is maximum capacity. And this means how much battery life does the battery have now as compared to when I first got the phone. This is a fan or device. This is a fantastic way to determine the current health of your battery. The lower it is, the worse off your battery is. That means that over time, your battery has started to wear down and it does not hold as much of a charge as it used to. So between when I got this phone and now, I have 99% of the original charge capacity. So essentially, I've lost 1% in the times that I've had this. Now, as that starts to drop lower, you can make adjustments to the, uh, the phone's usage of the performance features in your phone to save on battery life, essentially. So... That's your first step, checking out the maximum capacity. If you've got a high maximum capacity, then again, you need to be looking at those apps. But if you get a lower maximum capacity, that's when you know that it is an issue with your battery. The older your phone, the more likely it is that the capacity of your battery is lower. This episode of Hands-On iOS is brought to you by LastPass. It's always important to have a plan for the unexpected. LastPass can be deployed quickly in the midst of any event to ensure your business keeps running smoothly and every employee login is secure. Single sign-on manages employee access in a centralized view, so IT always has insight into who has access to what from where. LastPass protects while providing a seamless workflow for your employees. Visit lastpass.com slash twit to find out how they can help you. That's lastpass.com slash twit. Next, you will see a section. Uh, mine is currently called peak performance capability. And that is because my iPhone battery is newer uh, and therefore does not have the issue. But if you have an older phone or a newer phone that for some reason has uh, a battery life that is not near maximum, then there is a toggle here that lets you decide whether you want to turn on or off the the sort of counterbalanced features in the software to make adjustments to your phone to keep the phone running longer. So here's how this works. If, you, if this feature was not available, what would happen is you would be using your device and then say you launch an app like Wizards Unite, for example, that uses a lot of processing power. And you're using it and you get to a place where it does not seem to hold up to the, the current battery, your phone could end up shutting off. 
And that, of course, is annoying. What this section lets you do is dynamically, well, you don't do it, but the device does it itself. The, the operating system does it. Dynamically adjust performance. So drop some frames, maybe uh, decrease the rendering, all these sorts of moves that you don't have to make or think about to keep your phone turned on for longer as opposed to having it just shut down because of the age of your battery. So this is a very helpful feature and it will turn on and you would go into here and turn it off. So if you were in a situation where you really needed that processing power, then you could hop into battery and tap into battery health and then turn that feature off to have it uh, essentially push for performance as long as it possibly can before your phone ends up having to be shut down. Now, the last section, this is a newer section, and it's a very cool feature called Optimized Battery Charging. Now, what this does is it actually starts to learn the way that you charge your device. Say you go to bed every night, you put your phone on a wireless charger or you plug it in, however you choose to do your device, and your phone starts to learn about the way that you charge and when you pick up your device after charging, and then it uses that to charge to about 80%, and then it waits, leaves it at 80 and it waits until it gets to a period of time where it's about what it would take to charge that remaining 20%, and then it goes ahead and charges it that way. So you may be wondering what this does. Well, it essentially helps with battery aging. It has to do with the way that most devices uh, charge and discharge your device, so, or rather software charges and discharges your device. So think about this. You probably have heard that that report or that, you know, had that question, is it a bad idea to leave my phone charging overnight? Or is it a bad idea to leave this plugged in or that plugged in? Devices these days are made to handle that type of connection. They can work just fine being plugged in and charge overnight and what happens is it gets to the percentage and then it discharges a little bit and charges back up. Keeping that chemical, uh, keeping that chemical reaction going is what's good for the battery health over time, as opposed to charging up to 100% and then holding it there without any discharging, that's where you start to run into issues with battery. So this takes that uh, knowledge, that, that, that feature of discharging and charging and pairs it with machine learning and some other fancy schmancy technologies to properly charge your battery based on your habits in order to provide for a better charging uh, experience and a better health of your battery over time. You can see that I have this turning uh, turned on so that uh, overnight my phone charges as it needs to. And I have to say it has worked perfectly for me every time. There's never been an issue where I wake up in the morning and the phone's not charged. In fact, there have been times where I've woken up in the middle of the night and you know tapped on my screen to see what's going on. And I can see that it says uh, your phone is going to wait to charge the remainder until blank AM and, you know, be like 4 AM or something like that. And then it would finish the charging process. So it's very smart and very capable about making sure that your device is charged as it needs to be without you having to worry about anything. It is a fantastic feature that I recommend everyone turn on. Now, if you have an older device that does not uh, have a very good maximum capacity, you're going to want to head to Apple's website and determine if your phone or device is still within warranty. Because if it is still within warranty, it may be possible to get the battery of your iPhone replaced with a brand new one, which of course would completely reset the age of your battery and make for a whole new experience. If you've got a newer device that's also having that issue, absolutely take it in and see if it's still covered or rather contact Apple support to see if it's still covered because chances are you're going to be able to get that battery replaced because that ends up being a hardware issue with the phone. So in any case, go ahead and give a, a shout to Apple support. Um, you can just head to Apple's website and choose support to get help with your device. And that way you can know for sure if you're covered and if they can replace the battery. And even if they can't replace the battery for free, you may find that you can get the battery replacement for a reduced cost. So be sure to check that out if you're having battery health issues and it is not based on this screen here, uh, which shows the 
activity and usage of different apps within your iPhone or other iOS device. I hope that overview of battery health on your iPhone and your iOS devices was helpful to you. And if not to you, then maybe to that family member who's having issues with their iPhone, you can send them this video and say, hey, Mike has got it covered for you. Here's what you need to know. Super helpful. And by the way, I will include a link in the show notes so that you can uh, hop into Apple support and have a conversation about the battery life of your device. Thanks so much for tuning in again. Thank you for subscribing to the show. If you aren't subscribed, head to twit.tv slash HOI. That is, of course, where you can subscribe to new episodes of Hands on iOS, which come out every Thursday. And if you're on YouTube, it's, uh, well, you, you're probably here already, but for those who want to watch the show on YouTube, it's youtube.com slash hands on iOS. Don't forget to hit that subscribe button, ring that bell, do all of the fancy stuff that, oh, thumbs up would be great too. Whatever YouTube asks, it would be great if you could uh, take care of all of those button presses for me. Uh, I do appreciate you tuning in, and we will see you, or rather I will see you, next time for another episode of Hands on iOS. Check out other shows here on Twit TV, including my show, Hands on Photography. On this show, I'm going to show you how to get the most out of your camera, as well as be a better post processor. So head on over to twit.tv hop and subscribe now.